Morgan King is a Grammy Award winning songwriter, singer and record producer. His professional music career started as the drummer for Manchester band Illustration, signed to the iconic Some Bizarre label and has seen many twists and turns since, penning three US Billboard number ones with Clubland, writing for Kim Mazel, releasing hits under a number of pseudonyms including Sound Source and Oberman, as well as appearing on the Café Del Mar and Café Mambo albums. More recently, Morgan has been touring and recording with Lena Lovitch, as well as his solo albums and singles. Bridget and I were delighted to catch Morgan in an in-between moment at his home in Lincolnshire. So Morgan, we're in your lovely studio. How long have you had it here and how did it start? Um, here, uh, about six years, maybe five, uh, four and a half operational, but been here actually for six years. and. Um, it was a little bit of a shell, an old workroom with a big old bench that had been here for 50 years and just kind of cleaned it up and changed it to the other side of the room and started to inhabit it with guitars, basses, drums and synthesizers. Yeah. And uh, I got these particular synths here, which are the Behringer uh, clones of some classic synthesizers for my third album. And, um, but then when I started my third album, it went quite acoustic. So I uh, made a call to a friend and said, can we start a synth band so I can actually use these? And, uh, and that's how Inception in Black came to, uh, from being a one-off, came to being a, a synth band. And, um, and it's going very well at the moment. We're going from some slow stuff to dance, but it, was always, it will always be these. And, uh, and then got this lovely, little more drum. Yeah. It's very nice, it just means that uh, live I can stand up and I can play and be interactive with the audience when Marina's singing or when we're singing together and uh, do something that's not quite sequenced with sequencing but at least it adds a, like a live, a live feel to it so very happy with that and um, so yeah, that's going well. So is that the most reliable drummer you've worked with? It is, yes. It's more reliable than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's consistent, the sounds stay the same. It's if, never late. If, no, if, if only I had presets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
shopping. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> what was that? That was a single, my neck, not my neck solo single, a solo single in, in front of that, after that one. That's what you call that's, a that's, teaser. That's, that's, that's my teaser. Yeah, it's a real teaser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to let that tune out yet. <laughs> There's too much work to do, and which I can show you later. I'm actually building a, a, a hammer uh, set up with, uh, for metal. For when Marina arrives, we're going to do some abstraction for a track uh, on my solo stuff. And um, we don't know how that's going to be yet, but going to get some hammers out, hammer something, hammer time. put it in the track, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, throw it out and try another idea. But that's, I think that's the idea of music, yeah. Just to give it a go rather than think about it in your head, do it. A human doing rather than a human being. God, these bloody things weigh a ton. So, Morgan, what have you got there? I have a, uh, a railway sleeper. Uh, 1880. Where'd you get that from? Uh, I found them in the land, actually. But I might have to... Hmm. Maybe if they're on the floor. A bit more tone. Yeah, there you go. Different hammer. I tried this old shoe. cricket <laughs> and uh, maybe this could work I'm not sure if this will so what's your reasoning behind this then I haven't got a clue so. I just had an idea that it might work further medium and the small don't know why just to I take it this is something this is something you'll use in the studio rather than live isn't it yeah yeah I'm um, a bit of a bugger to get to Austria <laughs> <laughs> not really <laughs> not if you're Pink Floyd <laughs> it's uh yeah, I mean, I, I could sample it, of course, and I can play it on electronic drums on the kit in the future. And uh, so it's an experiment with, with, for my solo track, because uh, I was just kind of, I just had an idea that it might be really, really good. N not up front in the mix, but it's a bit like when I played you the drone with the other thing. Sometimes you're going to have this, these sounds in the background. It's like, well, what is that? It's like, well, it doesn't, it might not make sense, but you take it away and the whole mystery is completely gone, you know. And uh, so try it, as I say, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Just happy to be alive. You're listening to Big Satsuma Radio. And guess what? I think. Oh, I found one in my pocket. They're everywhere. They're taking over the world. They're like bloody triffids. That's a tune. <laughs> Have a time. <laughs> you can't resist. <laughs> so, Morgan, um, as a musician, where did it all begin for you? It began in 19, well, 77, really, as a, as, a, as a punk. I don't look like a punk. I might not smell like a punk, but I am officially a punk. <laughs> and uh, I drummed in this band. Uh, I lived in Manchester at the time, even though I was born in London. And uh, I was looking at the Manchester Evening News, drums 
under a fiver or under a fiver section and so I went to buy this drum kit to play with this little punk band and I played with them I couldn't I wasn't really taught and I thought you know I watched a bit of James Brown looked where the, the fingers were going and where the hands were going and the feet worked it out played with this punk band for about five minutes and then it retired to the top of my wardrobe and I was working and I knew some guys from school a year or so later had no intention to carry on I don't don't really think and um and they said, oh, we started a band called Illustration. Do you want to come and have a, a sort of a, a, a tryout and stuff, so see what you think? And uh, we had a, a one rehearsal in, above a pub called The Magnet in Stockport, and, um, and that was it. Uh, then I just tried to work out how I could leave a really good job <laughs> and indulge in music. And um, so that's what I did in 1979. I left my official work, which is a film lighting, and uh, went into Illustration. So what kind of music were illustration playing at the time? How would you describe it? Um, well, I suppose we, I mean, we had a guitar, we had a, a couple of synths, uh, like our, our old synthesizers at the time. And, and I think mainly the feeling in Manchester at the time was, is, you know, I mean, Joy Division were here in certain ratio, you know, all the bands were within an earshot of each other. And I think the main thing is nobody wanted to sound like anybody else. And that was the thing. And sometimes you could sort of hear a, a sound like Merging or you'd heard Magazine, their latest album and stuff or the bus, you know, you heard things and it was creeping in so oh, we can see we're being influenced by this and maybe that's not a good idea, let's find our individuality. So it was a, it was a very special time, uh, I think. And so it's, you know, there seems to be a lot of um, seriousness about which genre or which tribe. And um, I don't think, it was like that, not in my memory, no, maybe punk, you could say, yeah, I'm a punk, as I said, I'm a punk, but, uh, but we, we just made music, and now they say it was synth pop, but I don't think we would have sort of said we were, we were synth pop, but I don't think that, that wasn't there, and uh, yeah, and, and we did that uh, for a few years, and got onto some bizarre album, that worked, and then it all um, sort of unfolded and sort of fell apart after that really I think maybe the expectation or not you know uh, I think sometimes when you have a record deal and it will become serious people change and uh, and I wasn't for sort of changing in, in that way and so I kind of decided that maybe I, I want to sing and, uh, and play keyboards rather than sort of drum because I was just sitting at the back screaming at everybody anyway so I thought well okay maybe sort of put up or shut up. <laughs> Do you have any albums or anything left from these days of illustration? Have you got a big stash? No, no, I wish, I, I do have a stash of records, but from a later period. Um, but from that I lost my album, I think moving and stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking of actually buying one from eBay. <laughs> but I do have one thing. My snare case with the original stencil on that the bass player was a graphic designer, Paul uh, Lancaster. So he did a lot of the artwork and the stencil, all of my drum cases, but that is, I don't have the drum, but I have the drum box. I just feel like a, like a Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> the drum box version. <laughs> yeah, happy to have that. So what, what happened to Illustration then? Did the band split? Did you leave? I, I, I left. They, they, we did some bizarre album and then we sort of, uh, I don't quite, quite know how it happened. We worked with Martin Hannett at Strawberry Studios and he was going to produce the first single. And we'd been working with a producer called uh, Phil Alt, who did all of the stuff before. And, uh, and we changed to him for this session and I just wasn't happy. Yeah, it just said it, it, it wasn't what we do and I think you know he was wanting us to sound like other people and uh, and so I just wasn't I, was, I think I was supposed to be impressed but I actually wasn't and uh, so on the second day of, of recording we finished all the recording and I just said I'm, I'm kind of no, don't, don't like this and uh, I didn't officially leave then but soon after I kind of sort of just thought well, I, I would, I'm going to go and they carried on for a little while trying to, another couple of drummers, but then they sort of petered out and it, it stopped.
spend long with Morgan to appreciate the absolute passion he has for experimenting with sound, music and textures. So if you're, if you're doing a rude awakening and you want some sequencing. He brings alive inanimate objects and weaves soundtracks from threads of ideas and noise. Morgan samples snapshots of his life's journey and integrates them beautifully into his music. So, yeah, you just tune it right to the, there, there. You get the feeling that every song he crafts has meaning and resonance, a relatable message and a purpose. So what of life after the demise of illustration? Did you decide to do after that? Did you have a break for a while and jump straight back into? I, I jumped straight back in because, of course, because you know, shouting at the back, saying, you know, come on, come on, come on. I sort of then decided to sing, and uh, and I joined a, a reggae band, and as a, as a vocalist, and uh, we did a few like CND gigs and, and things like this, and just a, a bit of this and a bit of that, and uh, but then I thought, mm, I want to kind of like like write more. And uh, so, in the end, in like 1982, I decided to move, move back to London. Although actually, the, the the true story is I left the country completely, which I thought was for good. And I went, to, I got a one-way ticket to to Denmark, uh, to Copenhagen. And then I got done for sort of being sort of like a vagrant with not a lot of money. And they sent me packing on a train. And they said, "Where do you want? Where do you want to go?" And I said, well, well, to London rather than Manchester. And uh, and then they uh, they sent me they sent me to the ticket office, and they said, oh, get the Europe Express. I was like, chick, 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 my heroes, craft work, yes, I get to experience <laughs> the Trans Europe Express. And uh, and they they paid officially. Denmark paid to send me home again. And I, I, they take pay to get me out of the country, <laughs> and uh, and a few beers as well, which is quite a, quite um, quite nice of them actually. <laughs> And uh, and then I, I arrived back in London in 82 and sort of pretty much kind of stayed there uh, to, you know, put an advert in the enemy, looking for other musicians and stuff, and then sort of start, started. But mostly I bought a synthesizer and a drum machine to work out how I could do stuff myself. Two cans of punk IPA. This is love. Disguised as a dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beer at Morgan's. So away from the studio, even when relaxing, Morgan is still creating. You're digging up potatoes with Big Satsuma Radio. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I do to write songs. I dig into the ground, into the earth, with my bare hands, and I reach down until I find something. A potato. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. I think someone's written that one already. Five potato, six potato, Seven potato. More. Fucking loads of them. <laughs> so, 
So, this is what I do to sort of uh, write songs, grow things, because things take long to grow, and if they take long to grow, maybe a song takes long to grow. Maybe it marinates, it sits in the earth, but I'm not in a rush to, to make things happen. And, uh, and this is what you get if you take time. You get lunch. <laughs> and a coaster. <laughs> have a cup of tea on. Lunch sponsored by. <laughs> sponsored by Big Satsuma Radio. <laughs> you can purchase them on the website or on eBay at a higher price. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so yeah, so that's me doing, doing my spuds. There's a green one there. Oh, let's get rid of that. Don't like these things like that because they grow up mad. Yeah. So what are you going to do with those now you've, uh, now you've picked them? Now that I've picked them... Are you going make... to sign them and put them on eBay? Or... Uh, I might, yes. I mean, who doesn't want to buy a synth potato? <laughs> Spuds by more than... Yeah, spud you like. Uh, so, no, but this is this kind of... Yeah. It's very good. I mean, people may disagree that it's not good for the soul and it's not good for the songwriting, but, but actually, it's really good for me. And that's what matters. It's all about you. It's all about me. But it's not all about me. But it's all about the potato. And because that's on the radio. <laughs> oh. You want to come compost with me, Johnny? Morgan's Compost Corner. Sponsored by Big Satsuma Radio. Come compost with me. I was happy in the haze of a drunken hour <laughs> And heaven knows I'm miserable now <laughs> <laughs> There you go, compost And it's free Spending time in Morgan's company You can't help but be drawn into his world His generosity of spirit, willingness to include and accept And of course, his impish humour What kind of apples are those? Uh, red and green. I've never seen my coaster. <laughs> oh, you're eating apples with Big Satsuma Radio. <laughs> it's not long before Morgan feels the urge to pop back into the studio and try out a few more ideas for his ever-evolving music repertoire. This is a man who knows when to push himself, when to step away and chill, and how to balance the stresses of the music industry. The valley makes a waking sound my senses I have been graced another day in a land of plenty lavender sway side to side In purple heaven, butterflies flapping aimlessly. It seems as mercy to the wind. It's beautiful, so beautiful, beautiful, and I'm. Miserable. in 
miserable. And, uh, and so yeah, I arrived back in London and I thought, oh, okay, you know, and uh, there was a little music shop and it had like a, a, a Gen synthesizer, I don't know if you remember them, J-E-N, with some like, bright buttons on and a little drum machine. I thought, oh, I, I really want to get those. And so I thought, how am I going to do it? And then I saw this, uh, oh, this these little adverts for jobs. Thought, oh. And then, Four days after being back in London, I was at my, at my dad's, the phone rang. I went, hello, and they said, um, hello, is that uh, Morgan? I went, who's that? And they said, um, uh, are, are you interested in some dog walking? And I said, and I said excuse me, what, what is it, what, 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 you know, and I was really kind of quite confused. And uh, he said, well, I, I found your number on a wall. And what was the strangest thing about it is, before I left London, and uh, I was brought up in Portobello Road, uh, they, they built the new flyover, and, and a friend of, of, of mine, we used to go around writing for a good time, called this number, in toilets and everywhere, and we wrote it on, on, the, on the underpass in like 1972, 73, and literally, Back in London, for the first time to live, three or four days later, this guy had been walking his dog, saw it on the bike for a good time, called Morgan. But of course it was the same number. And he called me and I went, look, I'm not... We did this when we were kids, but if you really need a dog walker, I need to, to earn, earn, earn a couple of quid. I'm willing to walk your dog, but I'm not doing anything else. He went, he went okay, okay. So I went round, he had this big white dog. And uh, and he took me on the route he walked, and we put past the music shop. And I looked sideways at this kid. He said, "Oh, is that what you're doing your job for?" I went, "Well, what he, he said, how about I get it for you, and you can walk it off." I said, "I can walk it off. I'm walking, walking, no funny stuff." And he went, "Okay, next day." But he bought the equipment for me, and I, and I walked the dog. So it was like, I can't believe that we wrote these things years ago to just, and and, and I had my synthesizer, my drum machine, <laughs> and I was off. So you did get a good time. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, really strange, really strange. <laughs> All I can say is people out there, write your friend's name on the wall. <laughs> say for a good time, call them. Call Morgan. Now, now. Yeah. yeah, no, not me. I've got my good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dogging. <laughs> so, Morgan, what are we up to? Shopping. Taking a break from recording, and for a change of scenery, Morgan invites us on a very windy stroll along a local beach. Hello. Hello, Morgan. This is how I also write songs. You sure is. So, do 
to get much inspiration from the seaside, Morgan? Yes. Yes. Lots, lots and lots and lots. Yes. Do you like fish? I love fish. What's your favourite fish? Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah. I'm a regular, I, I like salmon. in a sandwich oh, to die for. I know a place just near here that do the perfect fish finger oh, yeah. sandwich. On a roof? Yeah, on a roof. How did you know? Well, we went there yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we now? I've come to see Annie Lennox. Of course we have. <laughs> What's your favourite sweet? Do I tell my secrets? You were sure a bit dipped up, man, or are you? I do. I'm rather fond of that, but however, mm -hmm. my favourite is an aniseed twister cough can. Oh. Same, same. Excellent. One has a twist, one doesn't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You made me day. <laughs> That was so sweet. The lady in the sweet shop, she said, who is he? I said, oh, it, it, it's Morgan King. I mean, he's, he's been on tour with Lena Lovitch and toy. Oh yeah, I know him. Ooh. That's a fun new town. Oh, there, there is uh, Trotter's Traders around yeah. there, and there's P&Q. Okay. There's a West Ham known. I think I know this, this radio presenter who's looking for a West Ham known. Or is it Aston Villa? Oh, got it, yeah. To the left there, most of my good friends are gnomes. Oh. Okay, so where are we off to now, Morgan? Shopping. I <laughs> just like so. Are you going to save it? Mm. We can actualize abstract feeling. Satsuma flavoured donuts. Oh. So tell us a little bit about um, Inception in Black and how it came about. Uh, Inception in Black, uh, I was. Uh, while working with Lena, uh, Jude, our, our old guitarist, um, was working with Black Marine, who's an avant-garde uh, pianist uh, from Serbia that lives in Vienna. And I heard what they, they did and, and, and how she played and I was completely blown away. So I sort of um, contacted her myself and said, would she be willing to, to work uh, with me on something? And, and actually she already knew some of my stuff and said, you know, absolutely. Maybe we can do like a one-off show in Vienna, and she would um, do new arrangements of my uh, from my first and second album, and choose a selection of songs and, and uh, adapt them for piano. So we, we did one show, um, at Cafe Kreuzberg in Vienna, which was great experience, and um, and then lockdown happened, and so we were sort of working online and uh, and I was doing my solo album, uh, third solo album. And uh, as that became sort of more organic, because I sort of learned bass during lockdown, what am I going to do? I want to come out of lockdown with, with something, you know. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll learn bass. And so I played bass. And then that added to the organic drums and I bought these synthesizers for um, for that album and of course wasn't using them and so I thought oh okay there's an opportunity maybe we can do some avant-garde synth goth pop you know just throw the pot in and uh, so I sort of said would you fancy make, making that that one the evening was called Inception in Black basically and it's like okay should we use that name and create create a band and uh, she thought it was a brilliant idea so we sort of spent lockdown working out some ideas uh, getting quite frustrated that we couldn't be in the same room and um, but then that culminated this year in doing our debut 
at um, Renaissance, uh, Renaissance Alternative Music Fest at Lectureworks in London, and it was absolutely, you know, it was only a, a 25 minute slot, but it was straight away, yes, okay, this is working, let's run with this and let's start to get some concerts. And so we've sort of lined up some concerts now in Germany and in Belgium and hopefully a, a couple in, in, the, in the UK. Find a good life 
and uh, so we're up and running and um, we're just on the second single which has been recorded done the second video and uh, Marina arrives next week and then we'll do the third single and just basically just record as much stuff as possible um, because you never know if the world's going to change again so it's kind of pushed us forward to make sure that we do a song put it on the hard drive and if the world falls apart again we've got lots of stuff and lots of work to be carrying on with so it's a quite a, an exciting time so both of you you're both very sort of free-willed free-minded creative spirits and maybe a bit volatile on occasions what's it like when you two come together and you're in the recording process uh, it's I mean, it's, it's really good it's uh, it's it's fast it's furious and um but we get like a, a lot done, and uh, the main thing is is that the uh, failure is an option. You know, it's uh, it's about kind of giving it your best and, and not being embarrassed or shy to 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 uh, make mistakes. And I remember we, we had a we had a little uh, chat, and I can't remember what it was. We wanted to put a sign up that this is this is a sorry free zone. You know, then not not to be sorry for just doing what you thought come come to mind straight away and, and, and I think having that freedom uh, to do that is, is is brilliant because everything seems so uh, controlled uh, maybe I'm wrong you know, I don't know but that, that's how it feels even people how they speak is like oh I better watch this I better watch that and I think if you if your mind works like that when you're talking then for sure it translates in, in, in into your art or, or there's a possibility that can happen and, and I, I don't want that. I, I, I just want to make uh, the honesty of the room there. And, and if it's a little bit this or it's a little bit that, then that's, uh, that's the way it comes out. But not to think too much about whether people are going to jump up and down or, you know, switch it off or be turned off by it, as, as I think as it, we just want to sort of tell the truth. And uh, as, as, you know, as we see it or as IMO, in my opinion, as they say everywhere you know it's it's uh yeah so it's uh it's it's a really really good time and it, i just wish we had more time but luckily because we're working with other projects together then uh, she's coming up and down more so we we've actually spent quite a bit of time uh, together this year working is it nice having someone working with you that challenges you as well when you're going yeah. off at one angle yes yes because I, I can do anything it doesn't there, there is no there's no limit to to her um to her ability uh, and it's like you know it's nice to have somebody who's inside your head and you can, can, can kind of get there and, and access sometimes things that, that, that I can't access myself and it's like oh wow okay yeah and uh, and now I feel that I have endless possibilities because there's someone who is is brave enough to say yeah well let, let, let's give it a go and not like kind of that's a that's a crazy idea or that's a silly idea or you what are we what were you thinking I don't don't get any of that it's just like yeah, why not? You don't have to worry about offending them. No, no, not, <laughs> not at all, no, no, no. Great. So what was the, can you remember the first gig that you did together, the feeling when you sort of struck up the first notes and you heard that, the piano going and... Um, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit, it was a bit, it was just, a, uh, you mean, as Inception in, I mean, the yeah, first gig yeah. in, in, in Cafe Kreuzberg was, that was a different thing altogether because it was just a piano and, but with the synths and having the, 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 the backing tracks, that was a kind of an unknown and we only had a couple of sort of rehearsals doing it. So that, yeah. that was a, quite a weird uh circumstance and so you must um, have been wondering is, is this all going to work together all yeah these sounds and things with an audience yes yes because it also it's like what was she going to play what wasn't she going to play and what, what what was she going to sing and what was i going to play and then trying to play her keyboard which was set for her it was just a, a minefield of kind of things that okay basically it was almost like an education and the brain was going okay next next show need this, need this, need this, need this, need to fix that. And it was just like uh, my brain was correcting everything and then her brain was correcting what she needs to do because she's not singing with the piano, she's singing with a microphone. So it's like, okay, I'm, you know. So it was a real, a really important gig and uh, and we got through it and, and you know, had a, a nice burger in the bar and, <laughs> and uh, met a lot of really nice people, actually. It's quite a good scene, I think, the sort of alternative music scene it is quite, people are, people are very nice. Yeah. So where are we now, Morgan? We're in my little drum, drum room. 
which is actually an art studio, but I kind of stole a little bit more area to put my acoustics in and uh, just kind of developed, changing the way that I play and building a different kit just for recording. And uh, this is hopefully won't be traveling anywhere apart from a church or which, whichever ambient sound I, I want to record on, but just sort of, yeah. Getting these new cymbals and little slashes and so this is where I come just to sort of just like sort of hang out and not think too much and spend a little bit of time just fixing my wrists and keeping healthy into my old age basically. you have to practice more as you get older? Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I, I'm just more enthusiastic as, as I've got older it's just uh, realizing that just playing for as a, as a meditation uh, another drummer sort of said to me you know they kind of go in their room and do it as a meditation in the morning rather than do any kind of form and stuff and they just kind of just just sort of just to sort of like sit in a groove and I was like that sounds like a really good idea because I'm kind of fed up trying to make my left hand strong and my right hand strong and just it gets quite sort of like boring and just to play for the sake of playing and to, and to experiment finding a groove and sitting in the same groove in it is very very simple it's just such a nice place just to kind of sit and, and there's a there's a mental benefit to it and, and as obviously as I'm getting older and balance becomes a thing, working my left brain and my right brain and having having the facility to do it, why wouldn't I want to invest more time in it? Because it kind of um, stops me from going insane. I'm never far from that. Well, what's that above your head? You're listening to Big Satsuma <laughs> Radio. <laughs> so you mentioned you've got some gigs um, in foreign lands. Do you see that your future for music really being more in in Germany and, and I, I, I think I, I think so yes because you know it's I'm, I'm, I'm getting older and um, and I think there is a there's a quite a bit of ageism that, that goes on in the UK I'm, I'm afraid it's, there's always been a problem here with one thing or another and um, and whereas in in sort of most places they seem to just like sort of love love music and they're not going oh well this person's this age or that person's that young and they're together and they should all be this or they should all be that there's quite a a lot of restrictions it seems mentally for people here to kind of that they need to overcome for them to actually in, enjoy uh, music. It feels that way, I mean whether it's a reality or not, but it, I, all I know is, is from my own experience to get concerts and to play, people are much more generous and uh, even if you have a, a CD here, it's you know over there people insist on, on paying and oh no, I want to buy the album. They said, well, I'll give you, no, 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 you know, you have bills, they have an understanding of that if you're an artist, there is a reality of you have to live, you have to pay your rent, you have to, you know, you have bills, electricity for this room. And there's there's much more of a concept of, 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 of that and, and, and people are more than willing to pay, you know, for, for, for that yeah. process. And, and that's, that's, that's really good because you can, you know, or I can devalue what I do. And, oh, yeah, that's no, gone. Yeah, just go and take an album and stuff. And, and and actually, at the end of the day, you know, can I afford it? Not really. No, I can't afford that kind of generosity. But you sort of you do because you're embarrassed because, oh, it's making money. But over there, it's like, okay, you want to do a project? How much do you need? This is how much it costs. It's, it feels a lot more straightforward. So you're working on some songs at the moment um, with Marina and um, what's, how does the recording process, how is it happening at the moment, Who, who's come up with what, did you come up with the music and then, I mean... I, I think at the moment because I have a background in what we're doing, uh, usually I, I sort of like start something off to, to sort of get it going, to just at least make a, a foundation and then we'll get together and uh, sort of piece 
something together. In in the beginning, I I've done the majority of the writing, but as we we're now into our second and third track, uh, she's now contributing songs that she's already written and stuff because she's sort of finding more time for it. And it's just a case of adapting those songs now. And so we did do a, a few of her songs live, which are great. They went down really, really well. And uh, which she actually sung and I did the backing vocals. So it was kind of, it's quite nice to share the responsibility that it's not just me uh, taking the vocals and somebody else is singing and you can support them and, and work with them and kind of understand how it works as, as, a, as, a, as a sharing those responsibilities. So it's kind of the, the, the heat's off, as they, as they, yeah. as they say. And what will the next release be from Insect, Inception in Black? The next release is called The Misty Eyed, and uh, that single's done and dusted, and just waiting for the mix, and we're working on the video at the moment, and that's why when she's here we're doing the third one, because we want to just keep ahead of everything while we can. And, um, and just because, just you know, it doesn't take that long to do it, and, you know, I'm doing the process of not thinking too much. It's like, okay, we've got this, be systematic, do it, just get it done, don't make it too complex. And, and, and I think that it may sound complex, but maybe working so many years doing music, maybe it's just become easier. I, I don't know, sometimes it, for myself, I thought, oh, that, 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 that happened very quickly. So therefore, is it really good? Because maybe I should work or struggle harder for it. And then I think, well, actually, I've been doing this for 40 odd years, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm, maybe it's okay for things to run smoothly because I have the experience and not, not to be afraid of that, that simplicity. So these are the kind of things I like to add in tracks which are mysteriously down in the mix. Giving you my big dark secrets now. I always like to add some drones. So in the chorus, you may have this. Are you ready? <laughs> Nobody can hear it except me. <laughs> and then maybe... Some ambience. Sometimes you add some nice layers of vocals in, if I can see them. So that's how I kind of lay things up, put some little drones, so always like something that just really kind of like a, like a glue drone, and then just build strings around, add some vocals in, so you have Marina doing one vocal and me, so there's this kind of uh, relationship happening underneath everything, even after I'm doing the main vocal, there is this quality of collaboration underneath, so there's a, a little snippet to the um, next uh, single. Hello. 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 Nice to, nice to see you guys. And you, how are you? Hey, you're wearing the same t-shirt. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That's spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, you're Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you just happen to be wearing the same t-shirt. That's uh, uncanny. Yeah, it is. Wow. Wow. There is the habit to wear the same t-shirt on the same day, all the same colour. It you seems to this? no. No. <laughs> no. You're in sync. <laughs> yes. But usually the colours match. <laughs> wow. So anyway, just wanted to say a quick hello and hello. introduce you in person there. Hopefully to meet you in person. 
I hope so. That would be lovely. I, th I yeah. think the are you coming to the Nottingham gig? Oh, I don't know. Steve and B movie in I December. Oh. oh, oh, if we when can. Yeah. Uh, when is it? The B movie gig in December. The 16th oh. in Nottingham, 17th yeah, in Manchester. Be, we might be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That'd yeah. be good. So maybe you'll meet them there. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, say say goodbye. Only car because there are few people. So. Okay. <laughs> ciao, ciao. See you soon. Bye. Okay. See you later. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. You two are in sync, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, wow. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, red. Yeah, red. <laughs> right, so would you like to have some lunch then? Well, yes. Sausages. We do like sausages. That are very, very local. And uh, potatoes, which are even more local. And some chard over there, which is even kind of, it's actually closer to the dinner. You see that tomato there? It's trying to escape. I left that tomato there. Do you know what for? For the slugs. That's a ruse. It's a ruse. Right. Oh. It's a ruse. Life lesson. Satsuma. Apple. Apple. Satsuma. You must know the difference. And uh, here uh, I have my electronic drum kit. Um, in case I want to do the full stuff, because sometimes working ideas out, um, I have the full, full electronic kit rather than just the hand one. And my secret weapon is my friend Patrick. He's so good on the drums. He's absolutely, he's in the groove. He's a star. He's in the groove, he is. He's a big star. There is no product placement in this video whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget, stop throwing Satsumas at my head. <laughs>
Listening to Big Satsuma Radio. Welcome to the YouTube channel too. <laughs> you know we're going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> it, it loosens me up a little bit, you know. Kind of. well, yesterday you were talking about um, that the demo version of a, a track that you put up on your Patreon page. If you want to talk about Patreon. And yes, uh, but Patreon has been a, it's been an eye opener. Um, because, uh, I mean, I don't have lots of patrons, but the ones I do have are very, very supportive. And it, it, it feels that to have this commitment once a month um, to, to people who are supporting me financially, it just gives me a little bit more impetus. It's like, okay, you know, it's the first of the month, I need to come up with something now. And, uh, and that's actually how most of the Inception in Black songs were written because it's like, okay, we have to do something. So we do something and do it. They hear the first demo, it's never released, and uh, and they get this this version that may be 20 BPM faster later. And then I thought, well, actually, it's quite a, quite a nice idea because you always see this thing where all, this was the single that was released, and then 20 years later comes the original demo. So, well, actually, why not give the demo now? And uh, because because actually, you know, Demos now are probably much better quality than they used to be with the equipment that we have, and uh, and so it's like why not? And it's kind of let's go of all that that perfectionism, you know. It's like oh yeah, there's the flaws in it. I just sung it once. It's live. It, it doesn't really matter. And and kind of you know because someone's getting something unique, things that are recorded in the moment, you know, and, and sort of. And then sometimes actually people go, yeah, I like the new single with all the production stuff, but you know that 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 demo you did. When you first did it, they go, I really like that, you know, and I'm having that now with The Language You're Leaving, which is the next single for me as a solo artist. Um, it's going to be mixed next week and just working on the video. However, I did a version with Marina doing a piano arrangement, put that on Patreon last month, and people have said, this is fantastic. And and a few people have heard the sort of demo of the of the version that's going to come out the game to be honest i prefer like the piano version so you know it's, it's up to people's taste really and I, I don't mind because i like both versions and uh, so it's 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 um it's been really it's been really really good and i do believe that you know music will be that way more in the future and and, and i like the fact that people are feeding back saying uh, i did one where I did an old track where my voice was a bit more jazzier uh, before I had some vocal lessons about six years ago and we worked on phonetics to kind of use my accent, my speaking voice into the song so of course my voice has changed from this American jazzy twang which I had for years to to how I am now and I was like oh I can't put that there because of oh, the you know it's so, so, well no actually it's, it's part of my own uh, personal growth as a vocalist and maybe it's good to put it up there and then I kind of uh, relayed the story to people and they said well actually it's really nice to hear the story the process of how you grow as an artist and maybe a bit more of that would be nice to hear and I think mm, so they're giving me ideas uh, which makes me feel more creative and more accepting of my past as well and, and, and not so in the closet 
with some stuff that I wish that wasn't out there anymore. You know, it's like, well, it is out there, and, and I see people actually online taking stuff down because they because they've now moved on, and, and I think, well, actually, maybe I don't need to take things down from being online. Just just leave it there, and because somebody else may like it, even if it's not my cup of tea anymore. It's, you know, just yeah. Morgan is unaware of the aura that he has surrounding him, but you can instantly sense that here is a proper musician, a proper icon. He's hardworking, inventive, creative, in touch with the spirituality of himself and others. You are listening to Big Satsuma Radio. And also, he's just a bloody nice human being. This is Morgan King. So, in your opinion, what makes a good compost? A good compost is lots of grass, lots of horse manure. In fact, somebody here said to me, what's the difference between here and the city? And I said, in the city, people just give you shit all the time. But here you have to knock on someone's door and say, can I have some shit, please? Thank you. All I can say is people out there, write your friend's name on the wall. <laughs> say for a good time, call them. <laughs> now, now, yeah, no, not me. I've got my good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dogging, <laughs> <Yeah>. shopping.